again and uh, I wanted to kind of uh, share my thoughts uh, continuing actually on uh, the conversation yesterday on stealing fire love the book so much that I wanted to delve a bit deeper into uh, the state of flow or ecstasis uh, which uh, Stephen Kotler talks about in his book so what I did today was that I decided I need to do some speed reading and do some more research and uh, answer some questions um, and also my own practices over the last several years I've been trying to understand this area of um, how do people get into the states of highly meditative states, what is it when people can do superhuman tasks and things like that. So in my own personal journey, I've actually gone and tried a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to talk about some of them today. I actually enrolled in a session with uh, Tolly Burkan, who basically talks about extreme spirituality, where um, we basically learn to walk on fire. In fact, Tolly Burkan is a person who uh, initially got fire walking, was a pioneer of fire walking in, uh, in the US and then spread all over the world. I think Tony Robbins uh, basically started fire walking with him. So I, I learned to do a couple of things. Basically I learned to kind of push myself beyond the limits of pain and my own threshold and then try to see if I can get into the state of uh, tapping into this what they called um, non-ordinary states of consciousness. And uh, it's good to kind of hear about this again when Stephen Kotler talks about in his book, how do you kind of tap into this non-ordinary state of consciousness on demand. So um, so basically I started reading more into it and I kind of read this book. I would want you all to pick it up if possible, The Rise of Superman. Uh, this is once again the book which before uh, Stealing Fire came out called The Rise of Superman, Decoding the Science of Ultimate Human Performance. And this is something uh, I want to talk about today. Because when I actually read the book Stealing Fire, I had some questions in my mind and I want to kind of go over them uh, with you guys. And hi Monique, how are you? Good to uh, see you on Facebook Live. And I want to kind of talk about some of the principles which were there in Stealing Fire and I want to kind of open it up and maybe, uh, first of all, I'm, by doing Facebook Live and sharing this, I'm actually trying to refine my own uh, thinking about what does it take for everyday human beings to, do, to tap into the state of non-ordinary states of consciousness? Uh, do we need to do superhuman tasks? So everything when I read the book and read both the books, I, amazing feats of people jumping off cliffs and base jumping, skydiving, so skiing and uh, surfing. But you know, that's like 1% of the world. 99% of the world, hi Josie, that's my wife, lovely wife in Bangalore, how are you? But you know, like I said, 99% of the world is actually doing ordinary things. Right, basically going to work, uh, dropping off their kids in school, uh, working their daily jobs, they're probably executives in certain companies. What I wanted to understand is that can we come up with a model where everyday people like, like us can tap into these non-ordinary states of consciousness. Also, I want to, this is also the reason why I'm kind of working on the, on the mindfulness movement documentary. Once again, a big shout out to uh, Rob Beamer and Lee Keckner, who are my partners in crime working on this documentary. So I want to kind of get into a couple of details. So one is revisiting ecstasis, right? What does it really mean? And we talk about ecstasis, and Stephen Cartler talks about uh, the four characteristics, which is selflessness, effortlessness, uh, basically timelessness, and the richness of information which we can tap into. So when I look into these four attributes of this non-ordinary states of consciousness and the ability for us to uh, for every everyday human beings, how do we tap into this mode of selflessness, timelessness, effortlessness, and richness of information, what we call STEER for short. And going on from that, I think the book talks about the four forces of ecstasis, which is understanding the psychology, understanding the neurobiology, understanding pharmacology, and understanding technology. So using these four forces, how can we create the superman or superhuman who can do ultimate things? And in, in one way, I understand how psychology, neurobiology, and using pharmacology and technology can really give us the tools to understand ourselves better. But my question here today is, can we simplify this even more, right? So, um, so that was really my quest today. Uh, besides embarking on some really fantastic journeys of uh, trying to experiment pharmacology and looking at how do we tap into the six neurochemicals, which are uh, oxytocin, serotonin, dop dopamine, uh, no rep, no rep, epiphrenin, epiphrenin, which I always struggle with that word, anandamide, uh, and endorphins. How do we kind of uh, 
not get caught up in really trying to understand how do we basically fine tune our body to release these six neurochemicals or really be plugged into EEGs and heart rate variability sensors, understanding galvanic skin response and walking around like androids. Uh, are there easier ways to do this? So when I started re uh, basically uh, reading The Rise of Superman and also looking into the father of flow, who is basically Mihai, uh, Cheeks and Mihai, who basically is kind of the father of flow. He talks about the 10 core components of flow, and I want to kind of go over them today with you guys. The 10 core components of flow are clear goals, concentration, a loss of feeling of selflessness or, or self consciousness, a distorted sense of time, direct and immediate feedback, balance between ability and challenge, personal control, lack of awareness intrinsically motivated and absorption. Once again, these are the 10 core components of flow, which is clear goals, concentration, a loss of feeling of self-consciousness, distorted sense of time, direct and immediate feedback, balance between ability and challenge, personal control, lack of awareness, intrinsically motivated and absorption. So pretty long list, but when you really start distilling, distilling it down, the argument I want to make today is that when we really start looking at the flow principles or the four characteristics of ecstasis, which is selflessness, timelessness, effortlessness, richness in information, I feel all that happens when you're in love, right? When you're in love, not in the literal sense of being in a relationship, that is also love. They say sex and ecstasy is basically way to nirvana, right? But anytime you're playing a musical instrument or you are skiing or you, are, you love what you do in your job, I think you tap into this essence of flow which is love, right? So if you really use love as the lowest common denominator, not trying to be woo-woo about this, I think love embodies these four characteristics of ecstasis, right? And my argument today is that, are we really complicating things by coming up these four forces of psychology, neurobiology, pharmacology, and technology to really get to a very simple aspect of human beings? Right? Our being, which is love. Is love the central aspect of everything we do? So that's really my, my, my I think my, my um, thought for today, is that I feel and I believe that if you love what you do, if you're in love with life, if you're in love and with, with the universe and everything around you, then naturally everyday human beings, you and me, all of us, can be in a state of flow. Right? And that, so that once again goes back to Dr. Chopra when he talks about in the pursue excellence, ignore success, right? I think each one of us can pursue excellence. And the pursuit of excellence, and if you're passionate, and if you're in love, I think all of us can be in a state of flow. And that, to me, is, I think, my, um, at least my thought process for today. Yes, I mean, all these books give us really good knowledge, but knowledge is useless if you do not, don't use it for the betterment of humanity and using this intelligence which is there. And the lowest common denominator for me of reading all these books and kind of getting into it is really looking at um, the essence of love. When a mother looks at a child, what happens? There's selflessness, right? There's no effort in loving the child. There's no concept of time. And the mother just coos over every single movement of the child. So that is a state of flow, right? So that is, from my perspective, um, at least the, sh the thoughts I want to share with you all today. I would love to hear your feedback. Um, and if you really look at it, when you talk about, um, I think when uh, Mihai, the Cheeks and Mihai talks about, you know, clear goals, concentration, and the loss of feeling of self-consciousness, I think meditation is a way to get us there. So what happens when we meditate? And you can follow any meditation. There's nothing, nothing about meditation says you have to be uh, in a Buddhist tradition or a Hindu tradition or a Kabbalah tradition. Meditation is at a very simple essence, quietening of the mind, right? This concept of the ego self and the chatter of conversation and the kind of distortion between who am I, the I and something else. So the simple observation of observing your breath leads to concentration. Uh, the simple observation of your thoughts coming and going and not being attached to it gets you to quieten your mind. So what does it do end of the day? It kind of gets you to understand your unity with everything around you. So this is, uh, I think, what I wanted to share with you all. Uh, once again, thanks for uh, tuning in to uh, my short session on Facebook Live today. And um, I will kind of, once again, dig deeper into this whole area of flow, how to live in flow, 
and uh, flow for every every one of us. I mean, uh, I think as a father, as a husband, as somebody who runs an organization, and I, I'm I'm always trying to figure out how do I kind of live in the moment and try to be a better being, right? And what do I do to kind of constantly be connected to this higher source or the source which is within all of us? Um, anyway, so that's really the essence of today. So thanks a lot and love from, uh, from La Jolla, California. I know it's a long weekend here for everybody in the U.S., so happy Memorial Day weekend. And to my friends and family in India, lots of love. Enjoy the weekend, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.